Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, but now it's back to War Thunder, and we're looking at update 1.65. The official release of War Thunder, um, as Guardian have said, something that has been in the works for a long time, but now, since Japanese tanks have come out, they've decided to say, well, it's fully released. I mean... They're still, it, it, you, they're still going to do the same thing. I mean, we have ships coming, we have everything like that coming, we ha we will have updates upon updates of wonderful content and all this stuff. So I'd, it, it's nice to say that it's fully released, but to be quite honest, at the end of the day, it doesn't really mean anything in terms of the game. Uh, it's just kind of a nice thing to say that it's now out of early access, one of the few games that seems to make it out in flying colours. So... Looking at update 1.65, in the past, looking at other updates, I've uh, split them into parts, and I believe I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So in part 1, which will be this one, we'll look at aircraft, in the another part we will look at tanks, uh, and then we'll do some videos on the uh, two new maps, and then the other modifications that have come to the game. So, the uh, links for all of them will be in the description and also in the video if you want to see certain things. So let's get into it. Let's look at the aircraft that they've added in. We'll start off with the USSR. They've added the TU-14T, which seems to be a larger, or at least in the sense of the game, it seems to be a larger variant of the IL-28. It has the same guns on it, it has actually less ammo than it, which may be an issue, but it is after the TU-4 instead of in the IL-28 line, even though they're basically both the same thing. Something that is unique to the TU-14T, comparing it to other um, aircraft at its BR, or at least bombers, it is also a torpedo bomber, which is really interesting, actually. Uh, it's something that we don't really see. Something which it's going to really struggle with, though, is the fact that the torpedo that you get, the 45-36 man, uh, well, you need to be going a maximum, a maximum 378 kilometers an hour, and <laughs> you have to be below 105 meters. So this jet is really going to struggle uh, going that. It is a very quick and large jet, and getting down to that speed may not be an issue. Getting down to that speed and on the deck, and then powering back up again to uh, try and get away from the enemy, that's going to be your main issue. The fact that you there isn't a, a, a speed limit on bombs basically means that people will probably favor the bomb loads. It also gets uh, mostly the same bomb loads as the IL-28. It actually gets more bomb loads than the IL-28, but it gets the ones which people use, the 4500s and the 8250s, because generally at that point you're taking out pillboxes, you're taking out tanks uh, instead of going for bases. You do have that option with the 3000, and also you get a nice option of the torpedo, as I said. So, the question is, with the IL-28 and the TU-14T being at the same BR of 80, which one do you go for? Well, in my honest opinion, you still go for the IL-28. It has slightly more ammo, it has the same amount of guns on it when it comes to those 23s in the front and in the tail. They both have uh, rear-facing uh, two 23mm turrets. And since the bomb loads are pretty negligible, and the ones that you would actually use that are present on both aircrafts, I would pick the IL-28 because also it is faster, and being smaller as well, it will be more maneuverable and a smaller target. It's kind of as simple as that. It's nice to see the TU-14T in game, but at 8 you have so many nice options. Uh, when you look at the Yak-30, uh, the IL-28, the LAR-15, even going a bit higher, the MiG-15 and the MiG-15 bis, the TU-14 doesn't really uh, fit in. And then, on top of that, you have the TU-4, which is generally the choice of what people go for because of its insane bomb load. The fact that you can take out three or four of these in a game, knock out the bases, and then knock out the airfields all in one run, why would you go for a TU-14T T instead of the TU-4? I suppose it's a smaller target, it's obviously a lot quicker, but, it, you know, the, the, the reason the TU-4 is so good is because with a squad of them, you can knock out everything in the space of five minutes. You can't do that with the, like, four TU-14Ts. The best you can do is knock out uh, three bases 
with the 3000s and then put a big dent in the airfield, but you're not going to do it in one run. So people are just going to stick to the TU-4, so a nice addition to the game, if not kind of useless. Something that isn't useless and needs to kind of be debated is the LA-11. Now the LA-11 has been added to the game, if you don't know what it is, from what I've read it seems to be a... Uh, a long distance LAR 9. There's not really much difference between the LAR 9 and the LAR 11, apart from the LAR 9 is uh, slightly faster because it is uh, slightly lighter, since um, the LAR 11 had longer distance capabilities. So that's basically how uh, it's been told to me and what I've read about. So it's a premium aircraft coming in a bundle at 5.3. So it's at the same, uh, it's at the same point as the last 7B20. Now, it's very similar to the last 7B20, but the main question that is going to at least come across my mind is, is it better than the Yak-3 VK-107? Because the VK-107 is the plane that people go to if they want to grind out the Russian tree. What Gajin have done is they've basically given every nation a super prop at tier 4 so people can use them to grind up the trees if they feel like it. Uh, for the Russians you have the Yak-3 VK-107, for the Germans they have the D-13, for the British you have the wonderful Griffin Spitz, especially the Mark 14C. I think that's a wonderful aircraft to grind with. The Japanese recently got the Kai 87 at 60, and uh, the Americans uh, get, well, I suppose <laughs> the, the Americans are the ones which kind of struggle with this, but they still have the P-47 MRE, which is in 5.3, and if you've played the game and done the challenges, you'll be like me with the F-7 F-3 and the A-26C-45. So you have options for all nations now to get that Tier 4 fighter, which uh, will hopefully grind the tree out for you. So when we look at the Yak-3 VK-107 and compare it to the LA-11, there isn't really a comparison. Uh, the Yak-3 is better in every way. Um, it's a better climber, it's faster, they both don't carry bombs, so that's not really uh, an issue. It has more ammo, which is a, a real deal with the uh, Russian aircraft. When you're in a, when, if you've ever flown a LAR-9 or a LAR or a Yak-9UT or anything like that, you'll know how precious your ammo is. So, <laughs> it, it's nice to have a bit more when you're in something like the Yak-3 VK-107 with 120 uh, per gun. The LAR actually has one more gun, but they're the 23 NS-23s, which you will also find, I believe, on the IL-10. Yes, the IL-10 1946. So they're quite slow firing, but then again, uh, that's Russian guns for you. The VK-107 has the uh, B-20Ms and the B-20S, uh, which you will find on the Yak-9UT and uh, the Yak-9P, and they're good guns. Uh, they're both going to tear people apart. One thing that the LAR-11 does have in its pocket is the fact that it is a bit lower BR, so you might get slightly nicer matchmaking, but the Yak-3 VK-107 is the plane to go for, in my opinion. It's just better. It's going to do better for you over the grind. Uh, I haven't really compared price of um, both of them, but the, the La 11 would have to be significantly lower price than the Yak-3 to be able to even think about purchasing. Because now in Tier 4 you have a lot of very good prop aircraft and you're also trying to push into that jet, uh, jet part. So the Yak-3 is going to deal with jets much better uh, just because of its guns and also its uh, slightly quicker speed and its rate of climb. Maybe you can try and beat them in that way. But also, um, just because, uh, what was I going to say? Just because basically the rate of climb, uh, sorry about this. Basically the rate of climb is the thing that's going to try, it, it's going to be better against jets because of that. And when you look at it overall, what are you going to use to grind out stuff? I mean, we can also throw in the D9 to this mix, which is at 5.7 and it is more expensive than the VK-107, uh, which is a bit weird uh, when you think about it, 1500 more. But overall, uh, it's nice to see it in-game. It's good that it is a lower BR than the LAR-9, 
because it had to be, but, and also the Yak-9 UT, which is, is worse than. So at 5.3 it sits nice, but you've got to compare it to the other premiums that it's running up against, and the VK-107 is just better. The Russians also get a premium Hampton. Uh, we'll talk about the Hampton when we get to the British, uh, since that's where it's actually found. So the Germans have actually quite a lot of new stuff, and what is nice is that a lot of it is lower too. We'll go through the updated models. Uh, since we have a new JU-88, it makes sense to update the other JU-88, so the A4 gets a nice new polish, and it looks wonderful. It is a lovely model. It, I don't think it was one of those planes which really needed a uh, remodel, but since we've had the D DO-17s added in, the JU-88C6, I suppose it kind of made sense in their heads. And it's a lovely aircraft. It's also a lovely aircraft, uh, the cockpits, even though they call it a placeholder, I would be completely fine with it if that was just the cockpit that it had um, for Infinity. A wonderful little thing. The uh, Heinkels, the HE-111 and H-16, follow their brother, uh, the H-6, and get some lovely uh, updates as well. They have kept the beautiful wings, and oh, it's just... I will always have a special place in my heart for the HU-111. It is such a nice looking plane, and once again the cockpit, even though it's a bit bare bones, it's still lovely to fly. Uh, when I talked about the cockpits uh, before, I said how, you know, in, in the 90s and the early 2000s, I it was the first time I played flight sims, and I played uh, stuff which involved the HU-111. So just being in that cockpit is just wonderful for me, so it's nice to see. Anyway, uh, moving on, the HE-100D1. So this aircraft is an odd one. Uh, if you want to know a bit more about it, I would definitely advise you to go uh, and uh, look up some other channels. Bismarck, uh, who is a YouTuber who used to play War Thunder, and now plays a lot of IL-2 uh, Battle of Stalingrad. Uh, I would, you know, definitely go and look, look up his videos, but he does a wonderful video going into the HE-100D1 and how it was designed and why it didn't, uh, why it wasn't basically given the contract over the BF-109, because it, they were contenders um, at the point of, uh, well, starting the war, and uh, pre-war, basically. But uh, the only thing that I found a bit odd that people have been discussing is the fact that the HE-100D1, or the HE-100, uh, a lot of people believe uh, would have had a 20mm in the nose, uh, which, you know, I don't really disagree with. Um, it could have had a 20mm in the nose, but Gajin have decided to go for a 7.92, and I think the reason for this, and also the reason why they've given it a variant name, is so they can add more in. Uh, so they can add the uh, a different version in which has a 20 millimeter or maybe you have to get an upgrade to get uh, the 20 millimeter we've seen this in the past with certain aircraft where they've added them in with uh, different uh, variations of what they actually had in real life and then they've either changed them or they've given them an upgrade uh, when we look at uh, what's the Japanese one I believe it's the Kai 43s the Kai-43, no, which one is it? Let's just have a look. Is it Kai-44s? And... Not the Kai-44i? Hi. They definitely had an aircraft where basically you had to purchase... <laughs> you had to purchase the guns on it, which seemed a bit odd. But, um... Uh, basically, you started off with 7.7s, seven and then you had to uh, buy up to get the 12 sevens. There it is. It's the Kai 43i Hayabusa. You have the Otsu mod and the High mod. Basically the Otsu mod gave you um, one 12 seven and the High mod gave you two, I believe. So instead of just having two seven sevens, you would have two 12 sevens. Now there's no reason why they can't do this for other uh, vehicles. I thought that's uh, to, to be quite honest, if you think about it in the game, uh, the, the better way of doing it is basically how they've done it with the BF-109s, and where you have just different variations in the tree. On a business standpoint, it makes sense to do that, because it means people have to research more, they have to push through more. 
Um, so instead of just having a HE100 D1 which has a modification which gives it a 20, why not have two HE100s uh, on top of each other or in the, the tree which you uh, which you have to grind through to get to the next one. So it's basically uh, whatever they think is right uh, at the end of the day. We've seen it both ways generally, they've obviously favoured the idea of uh, putting in a new aircraft, a new variant, instead of just putting in a modification. So yeah, that's how they do it. Uh, highlights of the HE100 D1, it is incredibly fast for 1.7. You will get yourself in a lot of biplane matches, and also with the addition of um, a lot of low tiered aircraft. A lot of people have been playing low tier again. So uh, sometimes uh, experiences may be skewed while the update has just come out so, because people are grinding those aircraft. But I've, sp I've still been in a lot of matches which have biplanes and a lot of matches around 1.7, which is where the HE100 is, and its guns are good enough. Three 7.92s may not seem like a lot, but when it comes to German 7.92s, or when it comes to a British 7.7s, you tear parts of planes off. You tear parts of wings off, generally. If you aim for the wings, you will saw one in half. So, you know, that's all you basically have to do. And uh, if you actually get up to it in this thing, one of the great things about it, because of its speed and because of its maneuverability, you can compete. Uh, which isn't really the same for a lot of aircraft. Like, let's say if you're in something like a HE 100, uh, 102, uh, 112 B-0, one of my favorite aircrafts at low tiers, it's at 2.0 uh, at rank 1, and it isn't quick really. It turns pretty well, but you have to have a certain amount of speed with it, and it has those two uh, low velocity 20s. Now if you get up to, to 3.0 in that thing, you're gonna have a really, really bad time. But um, but if you're even at your BR, it's a bit of a struggle, but if you go any lower, you dominate. With the HE100 D-1, at your BR and lower, uh, you dominate because of your speed and maneuverability and the fact that your guns are good enough to test off a part. But at 2.7, you also compete. Your guns may not be good enough to take on some of the American uh, planes, such as, let's say you get into battle with a Corsair. You're obviously going to struggle against a Corsair, but you can keep up with it, you can keep on it, which generally, if you get up to it, you can't do that in the vehicles that you're in. It's just a very hard thing to do. So it's nice to have that option. Uh, what I think is going to happen is this is going to get raised to 2.0. When we look at the planes that are at 2.0, the MC200 Series 7, um, the HE112 B-0, the A-0 as well, they all are completely outclassed by this HE100. So I'm just wondering if it's going to get up to it. I feel like once people start flying it, it's also German, so generally people will gravitate to an interest in aircraft that 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 is German I I feel like it's gonna get up to it uh, I mean it, it's it's we are going to increase and I think at 2.0 it's still fine I think it sits well at 2.0 uh, at 1.7 you still get put in a lot of uh, biplane matches even though you are tier 2 uh, you get stuck in a lot of biplane matches and you destroy things so Putting it up uh, 0.3 of a BR, I think, is fine for it. And hopefully that does happen, just so biplanes aren't as outclassed as they are right now. Moving on, we have the TAR 154A 1. This is another user made aircraft, uh, just like the HE 219. So, once again, it is lovely to see it in the game. It has uh, 230s and 220s at 4.0, so if any bomber comes near you, you're going to tear it apart, <laughs> which is great. As a grinding aircraft, um, I would actually say to people, still get the P-47 Thunderbolt. If we're comparing, um, if we're comparing a grinding aircraft for uh, just the tree uh, and comparing the premiums, the P-47D will never put you uh, wrong. It has that wonderful tracer belt, that APIT uh, M20 armor piercing incendiary tracer belt, which will tear stuff apart, and 
it's just better than the Tau-154. The issue that the Tau-154 has is that it's a heavy fighter and can't turn as well as um, stuff like the Thunderbolt. It is exactly the same as the 219. Don't get your guns in front of it. It is pretty quick, remember that. And uh, don't head on it. Just take it from behind or out dive it. Uh, take it in a turn fight. Watch out if it loops on you because its elevator is pretty damn strong. And if you're in a bomber, try and run the other way because it will tear you apart. <laughs> but apart from that, it's your stereotypical heavy fighter. It is nice to see though. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, other aircraft that they may add into the game which are uh, user made. I've seen some wonderful ones out there. And, well, well, we'll see, you know, we'll see. The Focke Wolf 190 A5 U12 is also put into the game, which uh, actually, it basically, it was, um, was it the A5 U2 before? Uh, I believe it was, but anyway, uh, it has been put in the game, and it replaces an aircraft which was there before. Now, I have it fully researched and everything, so I believe it was the A5U2. You now have to actually um, <laughs> you have to research the A5U2 again, which is what I'm doing. And the A5U12 is just a copy of the U2. And now the new U2, which we will talk about, since the U12, it hasn't changed, but the U2 has. The U2 has been severely downgraded in my head. Um, the the thing that the U2 had was what the U12 has now, it has a lot of guns. Uh, the great thing about the U12 is that you can get that R1 modification with the 420s on it. That was the only thing that made, the, uh, made it stand out against something like a Focke Wolf 490A5. Because the A5 U2 uh, always struggled. It was too heavy. It felt heavy. It felt bad. Whereas the A5, it felt exactly the same, but it had more guns. So you could dominate better in it. Now with the new U2, with its 220s or uh, MG151s, it's the same BR as the A5. Apart from the A5 has double the amount of guns. So or even triple if you add in the 7.7s. The only thing that you get in this which is kind of interesting is the uh, the new rockets that they've added in. Uh, the uh, WFR GR21 rockets, the tank busting rockets I believe they are. But is that worth researching and getting? No, not really. But now you're stuck in a stage where you have four Fokker Wolves all at the same BR now. You've got the F8, the A5U2, A5U12, and the A5. And then you've got the A4 at 4.3, and the A8 at 5.0. It, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, point that all those Fokker Wolves are in. It was so funny when, I believe, when the A4 came into game, it was either like 3.3 or 3.0, and it just, it absolutely battered everyone. I just want to see uh, what my service record is with that thing in. Oh, it, it was absolutely great when it came out. Definitely unfair. 33 kills and 6 deaths. Yeah, that, that kind of just says it all. But is there any point in researching this new U2? No, not really. Just use the A5, or if you want the more guns, use the A5 U12. They all perform basically exactly the same. <laughs> so, that, that's basically why they're at the same BR as well. Uh, it's nice that they've corrected an issue uh, that may have been there before if they got a designation wrong or something like that. But looking at the new Focke Wolf, just don't bother. Don't bother. There's no point.